today we are going to go over the death benefit on a life insurance policy. Since when I buy a life insurance policy, it is life insurance, meaning when I die, a life insurance death benefit is paid out. Since we have so much focus on the cash value, because frankly, that's what 99% of people we speak with, what they're interested in, the death benefit still is critical. So a couple key points on it. Firstly, when it comes to the death benefit, how we use it with cash value planning is this has a direct relationship to my MEC limit. It's really my age and death benefit, but those two factors, think of it this way, are the measuring stick that the IRS will use to determine if a life insurance policy will be viewed as life insurance in their eyes, or if it will be viewed as a pure taxable investment. That's the first piece. Second piece, when it comes to the death benefit. So when I die, the actual life insurance proceeds are paid to my beneficiary. In all cases, proceeds are paid 100% income tax-free. Why we do not just state that it is 100% tax-free is from an income tax perspective, meaning if I earn $100,000 of regular earned income, I'm going to be taxed on it. Life insurance death benefit proceeds, when I receive a payout, if I'm a beneficiary on a policy, that money is going to come to me 100% income tax free. If I am inheriting a large amount, maybe other assets as well, from a family member, whoever it might be, and the amount I receive exceeds the estate tax limit, that the life insurance proceeds are not exempt from that. If that's the case, a lot of times I want to use a special trust. I will hear of an irrevocable life insurance trust, a way to help leave money more efficiency. But death benefit proceeds on a basic policy are always income tax free. A couple other things here. Got my little dot there. Death benefit proceeds are paid to the beneficiary or beneficiaries listed on a policy. This can be one individual. This can also be 30 individuals. I can break it up, have it go to individuals via percentage, certain dollar amounts. A lot of times we'll often label the beneficiary, or I should say the policy owner, label the beneficiary as a trust. So if I have a policy and I label the trust as my beneficiary, something happens to me. The death benefit proceeds are paid to the trust and then within the trust it is spelled out exactly how the funds are paid to my beneficiaries. If we have children that are minors, we don't want them getting a lump sum at age 18 of $10 million. Maybe we put it to a trust. This way, it's paid to them as we would want them to receive the money. And we've got a lot of control over how we have funds paid to beneficiaries. A couple other things here. So when it comes to the death benefit, I do have some access to this. Now I cannot access the money just because I wanna dip into my $10 million death benefit and go buy a Ferrari. I cannot do that, unfortunately. The cash value is what I have access to on a whole life insurance policy. But with most life insurance policies, if it's whole life, if it's term, if it's universal life, whether that's IUL, VUL, whatever, I will have access to the death benefit often for the following reasons. Almost every policy, whole life, term life, and universal life, has a terminal illness provision. I'll put this 80% figure here. What this means is if I am diagnosed with a terminal illness, meaning I'm given two years or less to live, doctor validates it, the company will grant me access up to 80% of my death benefit. So if I have a policy to illustrate, Let's say my cash value is 200K, and let's say my death benefit is a million. I'm diagnosed with a terminal illness. 
I have access to 80% of the $1 million to use really for whatever, for whatever I want. Really the purpose of that is for healthcare costs. Chances are I'm gonna need uh, more medical care than I normally would, especially if I, if I have a terminal illness. That exists with just about every policy out there. Then I have, we'll call them living benefits. Some companies will refer to this as a chronic illness rider or enhanced accelerated benefit rider. There's different terms. We'll just call it living benefits. These are very popular with IULs. Some whole life policies do offer them as well. In fact, a few term contracts do as well, but depends on the life of the term policy. What this does is if I am diagnosed with a chronic illness, meaning I'm not terminal, I could recover, but I need home health care. I need to go in a nursing home. Instead of buying a separate long-term care policy, this living benefit provision will again allow me to access the death benefit to help cover those costs. It is not always 80%. Uh, depends on the insurance carrier. Often how you see the formula broken down is the older I become, the more I would have access to. Now in both features, with the terminal and the living benefits provision, if I access those death benefit proceeds and I die, so for example, I have a million dollar death benefit, I pull out 500,000, the net benefit that's paid out would then be 500K, meaning they are advancing the death benefit up front, which is important to be aware of. Couple key points when it comes to the death benefit proceeds on a life insurance policy. There will be more to come. Hope this helps in the meantime. Have a great day. 